We got Luke Hawthorne, the owner of Emerald Lawns. We're excited to talk about dirt. Hey guys. <laughs> so we have three things that we're going to focus on today. Uh, first of all is the makeup of Central Texas soil. Next is the story of kind of a typical lawn that you're going to see in our area. And lastly, ways to rejuvenate the soil and make sure you have a nice lush lawn that you can enjoy with your family and friends. Also, as a bonus, we are announcing a new product. So stick around till the end to have a special offer for you. How are you doing, Luke? I'm doing really good. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here today. Um, so we're going to start off just talking about Central Texas soil. Tell us a little bit about, about that. Well, as you probably already know, we don't have a lot of good soil options here in Central Texas. And if you're lucky, you have a bunch of clay. And, but typically you might have a thin layer of clay just sitting on a, a big shelf of limestone. So the soil you do have is probably thin and it's going to be extremely compacted, not just because it's clay, but also because of the construction process. Gotcha. It kind of reminds me of when you're driving along in Austin and you see these big limestone like cliffs yes. and walls and it's like, how does anything grow here? Because there's barely any soil. And then you see like a cactus growing on the side of it or something. And you're like, go. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> Way to go, Cactus. <laughs> okay, so here we are. We're on site. We have a uh, on site of a new home build. And um, we wanted to bring you here um, to see, okay, so the origin of a Central Texas lawn. How does it start? What does it look like when we start? So tell us about what we're standing on right now. Well, on this particular lawn, they had to bring in some dirt to elevate it and to level it off. So this is called road base. And it's perfect for for leveling and it's good for the foundation it'll help keep the foundation from moving but for grass i mean this is just this is nothing it's just rock and road base and they use road base because it tends to it, it gets compacted the more traffic that comes on it they use it to build roads but it's going to do the same thing for your lawn it's going to get extremely compacted okay and then if we go walk over here you're going to see what this is on top of and it's just clay and it's even harder than this is right now. All right, well, let's go check it out. So what is it that we're looking at here, Luke? So this is what was underneath the road base. You know, this is just clay, a lot of rocks mixed in. Underneath it, you have some more, what's called caliche, which is a limestone-based loose sediment type of soil. And you know, it's not really a soil, it's a rock-based soil. And how does anything grow in here? Well, I mean, typically, if you look, it's just going to be like a native grass that are, don't require a lot of nutrients. You know, they don't need to look nice. They just need to propagate. So that's all they need is this kind of dirt. But our lawns require more care and more nutrients than what the native plants do. This is one example of what a home builder has to do to get uh, a lot ready to build on. So they've got to bring in this road base you know, to elevate it and to help level it off. In other extremes, they have to actually scrape off, you know, to lower the elevation to level it. And when they have to scrape it off, they're pretty much taking anything that was good away. It's not even gonna be there anymore. So we have a picture over here of, of a root system um, that I'm curious your thoughts on. So a typical root system in, um, in a lawn that has either this leveling dirt or has been scraped, um, how is a root system gonna thrive? Like as we've mentioned, the native grass here is not lush, not green, uh, but to get um, kind of the lawns that we're looking for in our area, something that we enjoy to spend time on and to look at. Um, tell us about what's required of that root system. Well, you need, you need as big a root system on the bottom as you have top growth on the top. And what'll happen with a yard like this, if they don't do anything to try to improve the soil, is you're gonna have a root system, but it's only gonna be like maybe a couple inches below the soil surface. So it's not gonna be very efficient at taking in fertilizers or just nutrients. It's not gonna be drought tolerant at all. Like every, every time the temperatures get above 95, 100 degrees, your lawn's gonna really wilt no matter how much you're watering. You can't water enough when you have a root system that's only you know, two to three inches deep. Okay, so um, in order for roots to thrive and really for grass to be in a place where it wants to grow, um, tell me what would need to happen to the soil 
in order to allow those roots to grow deep so that the lawn can, can be pretty and lush and green. So you've got to make the soil better. And the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to loosen the compaction. And you have a couple of different options, and I'm going to tell you about both of them. First is you can do a mechanical aeration or a core aeration, which is what we've always done up until this point. And, um, and what that's going to do, it's going to break up the compaction. It has these um, cores, and they're spaced about every six inches. So about every six inches, you're going to get a, a plug pulled out of your lawn, about the size of your thumb, depending on how thick the, the sod is and how well it's been watered and how compacted it is will determine how deep the plug is. But what a new product that we're really excited about offering you is called a liquid aeration or liquid aerate. And it covers the entire yard. It's not just ever six inches. And we can do it two to three times a year. And it does everything a mechanical aeration does, but it does it a lot quicker and it's a lot more efficient. And we don't have to worry about cutting cable lines or damaging irrigation, which is something I'm really happy about. Very good. And so, um, I think we have something to help us understand a little bit more about what a desired root structure looks like. So uh, let's get right back to you. Okay, so Luke, we talked about this root system and how you mentioned um, what we currently are dealing with, uh, with Central Texas soil. Uh, there's not a whole lot happening with a root system. So what is the ideal desired root system in order to have that lush green lawn that we all want to spend time with our family and friends on? Well, as a minimum, you want the root system to be at least as tall as the top system, but ideally you probably want it about two to four inches even deeper than that. And the only way you're gonna get that is if you can do something with your soil to make it better. And we have a couple of different options for you that are gonna do the trick. One thing, we have something called a liquid aerate, which is a new product that we just discovered and we're rolling out for you guys. And this liquid aerate, how it works is, it stimulates all the bio nutrients that we're putting in the soil it, it accelerates the process whereas those biostimulants are getting in those clay and all this particulate that's here and it's just making them expand and just break out and by doing that you're allowing the root systems to grow down deeper but you're also letting water and fertilizer work a lot more efficiently with less runoffs so you don't have to worry about it going into our gutters and it's going into where it's actually going to work very good and so with the core aeration it's typically spread out so um, with a liquid aeration, you actually get more coverage, right? Because you're covering the entire lawn versus a core, which is every several inches, it's taking these plugs out of the earth and laying them on top. But the liquid aeration um, can actually cover more ground. Is that right? Absolutely. I mean, the core aeration is a good thing, but it's all we've had up until this point. And you're only going to pull plugs out about every 12 inches at the most. And a liquid aeration, it's a blanket application over the whole lawn and because it's a liquid it's going to travel down that root zone it's going to attach itself to the grass and it's going to go down in the root you know where it's supposed to work and where it's going to do the most good very good so it kind of follows the root the, the liquid aeration follows the root down so it's going to go as far as it possibly can and create deeper roots that sounds great um, and, and you know when we're talking about our gardens when we're gardening we we care a lot about um, the, the soil that we're using and we bring in a lot of organic soil and, and you know, our lawns are plants. And so it makes a lot of sense that we would care a lot about both the root system, but also the soil. So can you tell me um, what kind of impact uh, a top dressing can make bringing soil in? What, what, what would that do for, for our uh, Central Texas soil? Sure thing. You know, I know like when my wife is potting plants, she's not coming out here with a shovel and pulling up all this kind of dirt or going in the field and using that to plant in, she's buying a good rich potting soil. And while that might not be cost effective for us to do for your lawn, we put down something called top dressing or composting. And we use a, a turkey based manure product with a lot of like pine needles for acidifying our alkali soil. Um, gypsum, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Gypsum sand, which also helps neutralize the pH. And if you can do the liquid aerate along with top dressing, that liquid aerate or even a core aerate will help the top dressing and compost work itself down in the soil where you can change this whole makeup and actually have good soil here. And not just because of what you add, but because you're transforming this into something that it wasn't before. That's great. So 
the, the liquid array creates a pathway, top dressing adds the nutrients because like this iceberg, we have more activity happening underneath the surface than on top, right? Yes. Which is what is going to create the lawn that we are looking for. Yes. Um, so, so ongoing maintenance, your, your biggest suggestion is how frequently should we be doing aeration and top dressing? Well, top dressing is recommended once a year. Um, to aerate, you know, it should be done a minimum. Well, ideally you want to do it two to three times a year, but at least do it once a year. And if you top dress, it's an absolute essential. Um, and keep in mind too, the longer your root system is, the more drought tolerant it's going to be. And right now with hundred degree temperatures, I'm sure everybody's having some problems with some, some dry areas in the lawn or hot spots. And this is going to go a long ways to correcting that and, and helping you with your water bill too. Very good. Well, thank you for sharing with us, Luke, um, it sounds that just like we would change our oil in our car, we need to keep uh, maintenance going on our lawn to, to produce the lawn that we're looking for. So thanks for your time, Luke. And uh, guys, to our viewers, thanks for listening. Uh, we wanted to offer a special to you because we're launching this new liquid aerate. Um, we're gonna have a $75 special through the end of September. So, um, give us a call. We'd love to talk you through it. Any questions that you have about it or even dropping a comment uh, online, Luke would be happy to answer that for you to find out more about how an aeration and top dressing can impact your lawn. But uh, now, between now and September 30th, give us a call. We'll take care of your liquid aeration for $75. That's it for now. Excited to talk with you about dirt. Uh, next time around, we're going to talk about your lawn in, in its entirety as an ecosystem. So we will talk with you soon. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.